Hey everybody, it's been a long time since my last video, but um, well, I'm back, uh, so I hope you like this one. Um, one of the things that I've been wanting to play with for a while now has been um, LSP mode for Emacs. Uh, LSP is a language server protocol, and the idea is, um, you know, for historically, whenever you've done work with any language so I mean if actually if we look at my old configurations I'll just bring it up under here under you know bring it up under github um, and um, so basically um, if we take a look at this uh, you know we have all these sections for different languages uh, you know so if we, we look down here we well I mean we have all the other configurations um, so Python so when we do Python we've got to do a bunch of stuff um, and then um, you know web development we do a bunch of stuff JavaScript a bunch of stuff um, okay hype with more stuff uh, more stuff. C++, we have section here, and then have a section somewhere else with more C++ stuff. Closure, we've got a bunch of stuff. Yeah, ba basically, for every language, you have to have a bunch of configuration, and um, one of the things about LSP is if LSP is supported, it's in theory should make the configuration a lot simpler and so I wanted to play with that, but every time I did it, it, it was kind of messy because what happened was um, I would have to take out my configuration, put the LSP stuff, it wouldn't work, right? I had all sorts of troubles. Um, so what I decided to do is um, declare dot emacs dot d bankruptcy and start from scratch i'm not really starting from scratch what i figured i would do is um i'd make a new repo up here on github and you know i'd, I'd be a little bit smarter about things and that my actual um org file would be readme org so it would just appear here when you know if anyone wants to go and look at it um and you know in it l same thing and simplify it and what i would do is um you know, I, I kind of kill two birds in one stone, and what I figured I would do is I copy over configuration that I really felt I needed, um, try LSP, and then if I like the LSP stuff, or well, if I could figure out the LSP stuff, then what I would do is over time, as I decided I needed packages or I missed them, I'd bring them over from my configuration, which kind of got a little bit, you know, a little bit crufty over time, and maybe this way I can, you know, things like, like I have, um, gg tags and i have dumb jump and i think i have maybe even have another tag type thing in there and i'm really only using dumb jump so why do i need the other ones um you know and i have rip grab and all these other grep things in there um and i'm not using all of them so why should i have all of them so i'm just going to do this a little bit over time and so so what i did here to start with we're going to take a look at how i got lsp running because basically i tried this a few times and i always had troubles and I want to share with you the pain points I had to maybe save you from some of them. Um, so here, if you look at the configuration, um, these are things, I actually found this, Matthew ZMD, I found this, um, he posted a link to his config um, on a Reddit thread the other day, and these are just a few things that I saw in his config that I wanted to grab. I also grabbed his configuration um, for LSP. So there's already some stuff. We go over here to Emacs, which I have up. Um, this is what I moved over so so far. So I have a little interface tweaks, and this is all stuff from my old configuration. I knew I'd need fly check, so I put that in. You know, can't not have them to get. Uh, sorry, you know, that's just the way it is. Uh, swiper and council. This is my old configuration as well. Nothing different. But I found that when I just I just started with vanilla Emacs, and um, it just wasn't doing it for me. I, I just needed swiper right away. That that was kind of that might be the most critical package for me to be comfortable. I'm so used to the way it does completions. Um, you know, a couple of small things here that, I'll, that I will need. Well, I actually, I don't need these. Um, and I've covered these in my older videos. Um, so which key uh, for regular expressions. So you can use regular, regular expressions. Uh, the org stuff I need for capturing and stuff. Loading other files loads my email configs from a private file. Um, you know, etc. A couple other things. Uh, you know, just because this is the base stuff that I need working. Um, the theme I'm using 
is um, Adwaita, I guess you pronounce that. That's just one of the built-in themes. Um, let me just make this a little bit bigger and the font a little more. This is one of the built-in ones. I'll, I'll install my own themes later on, but I just wanted to start with this, uh, you know, with simple. So, so let's see what I ended up doing for, um, basically for, um, for this LSP stuff. So the first thing that I had to do is I had to install um, some packages. So one of the things that I had to do is let's put, well, I needed some changes for company and company is the completion that I'm using now. And I have this off screen. So, um, so I'm gonna have to add this um, company LSP so that company will work for the configuration. Um, I also need my LSP configuration, which I have off screen. And as I mentioned, sorry, as I mentioned, I copied this from um, um, from Matthew's repo, so it's just his stuff, and it's, you know, I figured let's give this a shot. So I just set this up, not a problem, and um, and I figured let me try. Um, to set up first for Python, because you know Python should be pretty simple. So if you look over at the um, LSP um, homepage, uh, and you can read all this stuff here, and it says um, supported stuff, Python, um, Py PyLS, Py language server, and this it says here it is built in. Um, now the thing is you need them you mean, built in means it's built into this LSP mode, so you don't have to do anything else under Emacs. But what you do have to do is you do have to install the Python language server. So let's do a couple of things here. I'm going to come over here, go off screen, and grab. grab the Python configuration that I use. And all I really need here is a couple of things. Actually, this, this I'll need later on. Let me just get rid of this for now. I'll show it to you in a minute. In theory, yeah, we'll get rid of this for now, sorry. In theory, I shouldn't need anything else because, it, oh, it's all built in. So let me exit Emacs and load it again. And let me edit a Python file. So let me go to the temp directory. And let me just make a directory p1. I'll make p2, maybe I'll need that. Temp p1 hello.py. And it says no LSP server. It's like, oh, I have no LSP server. So let's look at LSP log. And it says pi ls is not on my presence path. And that makes sense because it isn't. So then I figured, oh, I've got to install this. So let's look over here. And it says uh, Python. Oh, I have to do pip install Python language server. So I did pip install. And it didn't work. And make this bigger. It didn't work. And it didn't work because, well, I didn't have, um, let me just actually get my Emacs back up. Um, it didn't work because um, I didn't have pip installed. So I. Then I wanted to do sudo pip install, but if you're under, under um, at least Linux Mint, the default Python is Python 2.7, and I want to use Python 3, and basically I was going back and forth. I just could not get it to work cleanly, um, but I finally figured it out. What I ultimately did is let's exit Emacs again, and what I did is I made a virtual environment. So, so I did virtual environment, p Python 3, and, and I called it P3. And um, this, is, this is probably something equivalent on Windows, and it's the same, I'm sure, on Mac. Create a virtual environment that uses Python 3 and store it in here in this directory. I put all my virtual environments in that directory. And that way, I can use the virtual environment manager, and I can say work on P3. So now I'm in, whoops. Um, it doesn't exist. Do we not have it here? Oh, I guess I didn't make it on this machine. So let's actually do that. So virtual environment dash p python 3 and p3 is for python 3. 
and then I'll do work on T3. So now you can see here I'm in that virtual environment, so everything that I will install under Python will just live in there. So now I can do my pip install Python language server ball. So we're going to do install. This will just take a little bit of time. And you'll notice that I still have P3 there. So if I do my Emacs, and I'll do Emacs, well, let me just lead, read my, you know, do my readme or just because. Same thing, I'll same, same place as before, not a big deal. Make the font bigger, go here, and let's go to temp p1 hello.py. And here's one thing, and I, I couldn't quite figure it out like what if I want this not to be part of a project that I, I couldn't get LSP working on this if it weren't part of a project so I just kind of gave up and said okay let's just make it part of a project that I'll be the project root and now all of a sudden you know and I'm, I'm slowing down so you can see the, um, the completions And I can do start Python or run Python. And it doesn't work because I don't have the code. And there we have it. So that all works. So basically, this worked really well, except I don't want to have to be in my virtual environment in here all the time. So what I ended up doing, that's where I copied over the configuration from before. And what I did is I set up um, the package, the Emacs package, virtual end wrapper, which I covered in an earlier video, but I said, let's just make sure that I'm working on this P3 one and my executable is Python 3 for LSP. So if I save that and I exit, now let's deactivate this virtual environment. Let's do Emacs uh, temp P1 hello.py. Let's just go right into there. Um, and let's say, and we see we're still getting all of this goodness. So, so that's pretty much it. Let me just kill this. I don't need it anymore. Um, so that was it, and that's how I got LSP working um, for for Python. And you know, it seems kind of cool. I just did this a day or two ago. So then I wanted to get it working for C plus plus, and C plus plus was also pretty easy. So let's just um, go to my configuration. And the C++ one, I just needed to, I just decided, let's try to use Clang, because that's um, I have, you know, that's also built in. Uh, apparently, you can use these other ones as well. But you just need to have Clang D. But unfortunately, let's move over to this terminal, I didn't have Clang D. You know, it wasn't there. It turns out that it's, you know, so if I go through this whole thing, it won't work again. Um, and that's because, Um, I need Clang Tools installed. And I'm doing 6.0. And I'm doing 6.0 because that's what I installed on my laptop before. Um, let's try that again. And now we're going to install Clang Tools. While that's going, um, it turns out that it's not Clang D. It's rather Clang D 6.0. So that's what you need. Um, you know, and so I had to set, I, I, I don't know if I need both of these, but this is how I got it working. Um, so let's save that, let's exit. And let's just run Emacs. Hello CPP. It gives me the same question about the project. Again, if you know how I can just do this on a file, please let me know. And I've got my snippets already installed. So that works. But you'll see that, you know, I'm getting my completions. Uh, 
you know, I've got my, you know, my checking and all that stuff. And so it seems pretty cool that it looks like I can add other languages pretty quickly and pretty easily here. So, so I think that's kind of neat. Um, so anyway, um, that's all I wanted to show for today. That's what I've been doing with LSP. Um, I will be using this new configuration for a while as I move things over. We'll see how it goes with this. Um, so that's it. So I hope you enjoy it. And um, yeah, um, hopefully it uh, won't be so infrequent moving forward. Okay, bye-bye.